Hey, Lawn Care Nation. In this video, I wanna share some tips for quoting lawn mowing jobs coming up. So hey, Lawn Care Nation, in this video, I wanna share some tips for quoting lawn mowing jobs. So uh, if you're just starting out in business, this can be one of the most daunting tasks to even think about, about you know how do I price things properly so that I'm not leaving money on the table. And as I said, uh, if you're new to the lawn care industry and you're new to mowing lawns, uh, it's to be expected that you're gonna make some mistakes. Uh, but what's important to remember is that you just learn from those mistakes and you adjust your pricing accordingly as you move forward. So I'm gonna start off by saying that uh, one of the first things is that you have to know your numbers. Uh, you have to know uh, what it is that you're paying for, for insurance, for your business licenses, uh, what your truck is costing you, how much fuel uh, you're using on average, uh, what your mowers and equipment and tools are costing, uh, your internet service, uh, your cell phone service, everything that um, it uh, is required to uh, start a business, to run your business successfully, all of those costs, you have to know your numbers. You have to know what it is you're paying to uh, actually be in business. Uh, now, uh, your first year in business is this is going to be very difficult to tell. Uh, you are basically going to have to just ballpark it. You're going to have to uh, sort of guesstimate uh, what you're going to spend on gas and things like that. Uh, but I'll give you a tip. When you're pricing lawns, uh, start out at least uh, around the $60 per hour mark. That is basically $1 per minute uh, that you're on a property. So when you go out to look at uh, a, a property uh, and you think it's going to take you, uh, you know, 30 minutes to mow that uh, from, you know, the trimming, the mowing, the blowing, the complete job, uh, then you would be charging $30 to mow that. If you think it's going to take you 40 minutes, then you're going to charge $40. And that's a good uh, starting off point that you can later adjust uh, when you have a more complete sense of your numbers after your first season. Now also when you figure out uh, what you wanna charge for an hourly rate that you're gonna base all of your lawn mowing jobs on, it's important to also have a minimum charge. So I talked about you know if a lawn takes you 30 minutes, you charge $30. But uh, what if you get to a lawn that only takes you 10 minutes? I do a lot of really small, dense neighborhoods that are uh, you know properties that are 4,000 square feet, including the house, the driveway, sidewalks, things like that. Uh, so the lawn is a tiny little patch it might be uh, 10 feet by 10 feet like a little tiny square and uh, lawns like this can take me five minutes ten minutes uh, to do from beginning to end uh, once I pull up so I'm not going to charge uh, that client uh, $5 or $10 to come mow their lawn because I'm traveling there. I have still other expenses. Uh, so you want to set a minimum charge. With me, it's $30. So when I get to those ultra tiny lawns, uh, I know that uh, you know it's $30 uh, to do that job. This also helps in neighborhoods that are uh, very similar. So those types of properties that I was talking about, uh, there's whole neighborhoods that are being built with say up to 200 homes uh, all in that same property size range. And in those cases, I uh, no, I don't even need to look at the property to quote uh, the price on that because they all fall under that minimum charge. So they all uh, become $30 mows. So the next thing I want you to think about when you get to that property is think about the travel time. How long did it take you to get to that property? And think about how that property will increase incorporate into your weekly schedule what day of the week you would be doing that property and the distance from the last house before you would get to that property think about that travel time also think about the uh, parking situation in that neighborhood. I've talked a lot on my podcast about uh, how some of these really dense neighborhoods are becoming overly um, difficult to find parking for. And uh, I had a client last year that was in uh, one of these neighborhoods and I went to mow their lawn and with my truck and trailer, I simply could not find parking uh, because the houses were so dense. There's so many cars uh, from all of these uh, owners. They might have renters in their basement that also have cars. Uh, so very limited parking space. And uh, with this particular um, situation, I ended up going back and forth to that house five times that day uh, until I finally found a spot to park uh, around 4.30 in the afternoon. 
So think about parking and how it will relate on your weekly uh, routes uh, because if it becomes a pain and you're having to go back and forth uh, to try and get that mowing done, you may want to consider charging more for that property because of uh, the potential for problems with parking. So next, I want you to look at the complexity of the lawn that you're about to mow. Uh, look to see, are there any hills or slopes? Uh, and can you do those with the mowers that you have? Uh, how much edging is involved in this property? Does the customer want you to do uh, the blade edging on the sidewalks and driveways uh, of this property? Or do they want what I call uh, or refer to as a utility cut, where they basically just want you to mow and go? They're not looking for anything uh, fancy or anything special. Special. Are there lots of trees or garden beds that you have to go around? Is it a straight striping type mow or do you have to go around those trees and other uh, obstacles? Uh, think about the type and size mower that you would need to mow these lawns. Can you do the entire lawn with one type of mower or uh, do they have gates and uh, backyards that restrict access with bigger mowers that you may require uh, say a smaller push mower to get into the backyard to do? Also, so uh, with uh, things like trees, I have a few properties where uh, branches are so low that I can't get under it um, with the mower, yet the lawn goes right up to the tree trunk. So I have to spend extra time on that lawn uh, using the weed whacker and trimming all of that lawn around and underneath the tree. So some other things that you need to uh, think about uh, as well uh, is uh, do they have pets? Uh, will animal waste in the yard be an issue? Do you need to lay out a policy regarding animal waste? Also, uh, are there children's playgrounds uh, in the yard? Are they enclosed, say, in a bark mulch type uh, garden bed? Or are they just in the lawn where you're going to now need to do all this trimming around the posts, around the slide area, and things like that? Uh, so always think in terms of how long uh, this is going to take you to do. Do they have pools and trampolines? Do they want the trampolines uh, moved? Do you have a policy in place uh, whether uh, you move trampolines or not? Uh, all sorts of things that you want to think of ahead of time. And when you're getting to that property, you want to constantly be assessing uh, that property uh, for all of these obstructions, all of these uh, things that you may need to work around. So the next thing I want you to think about is the type of service you offer and the frequency of that service. So do you only offer a weekly only service like I do? Meaning I only do weekly mowing for all of my customers. I don't do bi-weekly or every two weeks. I don't do every 10 day cuts. Everybody on my list only gets a weekly mow. So you want to think about that because that can change the price. If a customer and you're willing to, uh, you know, do weekly or bi-weekly mowing in your business or 10 day mowing, which is pretty common with new businesses, new guys starting out in the business, because again, you want to build up that clientele. You're just getting your start in and you, you know, don't want to say no to people. You don't want to walk away from potential work. So you're more likely to take on, uh, you know, mowing every two weeks or mowing every 10 days. I did when I started and it adjusted over time as my business got more established to only offer that weekly mowing. So take that mowing frequency into consideration when you're looking and assessing the uh, condition of the lawn. Uh, is it a healthy lawn uh, that that customer is asking you to only mow every two weeks? Or is it sparse and just full of weeds and would be fine uh, on a two week basis um, if you're uh, going to be offering that service? So all things to consider the frequency, you know, uh, together with the condition of that lawn can also affect the price that you offer. So last but not least here is think about the disposal of the grass clippings. So in my business, uh, it is a 100% bagging lawns. That's all we do here. Every uh, lawn care company that you see here will be bagging lawns in one form or another. Uh, the only times where uh, bagging is not done uh, is in uh, the summertime when things have dried out because we get so much rain uh, and also on some commercial 
commercial properties, you'll see guys uh, just side discharge. So this is something that you will need to take in consideration in your business. Are you able to just side discharge uh, lawns? Will you need to double cut those lawns to make it look presentable? Are you gonna be mulching uh, those lawns? If you're bagging, what are you doing with the clippings? Do you uh, have to drive to a city a green waste disposal facility to get rid of those uh, grass clippings? Or, or can you leave it on site on the customer's property, either in a compost a pile or compost bin, or uh, maybe they're like uh, what I have here in my city where every house has a green waste bin that you can put those grass clippings in and the city takes those away on garbage day. So a lot to consider uh, when you think about what you're gonna do with the grass clippings uh, once you're done cutting those uh, and the method that you're gonna use for cutting that grass. So that's it for this one, guys. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below. Let me know any other tips that I may have left off this video on how to quote uh, lawn mowing jobs. Uh, if you like this, how to start a lawn care business type video, I'll leave another one up here in the corner that you can watch, or you may be interested in another one of my videos and I'll leave one of those up here in this corner that you can watch. So that's it for this one, guys. Here's to wishing you guys all overwhelming success and freedom in your lawn care business. Bye for now.